by that time I had already seen somebody's denouncing video, but I was somebody where I was like, oh, well, perhaps they just really put the organization before God, not knowing it doesn't matter if, because I think a lot of people think you're physically bowing down and like how you would when you're at church with God, like if you get on your knees and pray, they thinking you're constantly bowing down to this false deity. But it's not just that. Like you have to think about when you are wearing those letters, you have to think about what's coming out your mouth. Mm, that's it. Yeah. And, and how like compared to like God, how far they go to bat for these organizations. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tea and Testimony with Tina. We're here with a special guest named Kiana. Thank you so much, Kiana, for joining us. I love having this time with our special guests that come and partner with this ministry. I love to hear their journey on growing and maturing in Christ and how they got to this place of deliverance and what God is doing in their life. And so welcome. I want to welcome all of you to this broadcast and welcome Kiana. Kiana, tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll get into our broadcast. We were having a little bit of fun backstage, y'all. So much fun that I almost <laughs> forgot to press record. And listen, because it was just getting gooder and gooder and gooder and I couldn't <laughs> let y'all miss it. I'm like, you know what? Let me, let's get started with our conversation. So welcome, Kiana. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, hey, I'm Kiana. I'm <laughs> from Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, I moved to Dallas almost, yeah, two years ago, August of 2022. I graduated from South Carolina State University. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So Kiana came to this ministry for deliverance, and she is a DFW. You're not necessarily a native, but you are my sister. And right in this area, we're both in Dallas. We're both in a DFW Metroplex. And so I actually, let me, I, let me just cue y'all in on something funny. We were talking about a little bit backstage. I just kind of still feel it in my spirit to talk about. <laughs> so we were kind of laughing a little bit, having a bit of an icebreaker. And I was apologizing, not really apologizing, but I was like, girl, excuse the look right now because <laughs> sis ain't got no makeup on and she didn't just pull it up on y'all just real real simple just like this and her and i both were sharing our stories about just really stripping and just being just sincere in who we are and being comfortable with who we are Yep. And so I was just telling her, I was like, there was a time, and just to give y'all a brief synopsis of what we were talking about, there was a time that I would not do this, okay? I would not go live. I would not do a recording. I would not do anything unless I had a face full of makeup, a bust down middle part, 30 <laughs> inches down to the flow, right? 30 plus, because I ain't that tall. So my 30 going to be almost to the flow. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> plus people are like, I, you look taller online. Nonetheless, I'm not. I'm not. I'm barely five, six. I'm like five, five and a half, and I'll be like five, six. You taller than me. <laughs> How tall are you? Five, four. <laughs> so I got you just by like, ee, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Shout out to all the shorties out there in the world. Baby, we big in the spirit. <laughs> Understanding? No, we are giants <laughs> in the spirit. Don't don't play with us. Don't play with us. Don't play with us. So come, we come here today, and I was talking about, because you're beautiful, Kiana, matter of fact. Well, as soon as your face popped up on the screen. I was like, wow. I mean, I could, I could tell you have lighting, but I was like, there's such a glow. There really truly is like no lie. I, I ain't finna, you know, puff no smoke um, <laughs> or, or blow no smoke your way. Truth of the matter is I literally, the minute you came on the screen, I saw the glow in your face. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about that glow, but there's just a natural glow, right? That not only comes from deliverance, but mm -hmm. when it comes to when you're just really free and when you're really okay with who you are. Right. Like you dress it up and, 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 and all of that. Right. Make it look good for everybody else. I remember the years of masquerading. What yeah. about you? Tell me a little bit about your experience in the times where you felt like you covered up. And mm -hmm. even now in the times where you feel uncovered, what does that look like for you? 
Yeah. So honestly, God started dealing with my posterior and my interior um, when I moved to Dallas. Mm. Um, but first it started with the interior. He worked on my heart. And so um, when I graduated college, I had got out of a relationship. I thought I was going to marry that man. Oh, Check. that was not my husband. And I, and I knew that, but I don't know what it was in me that just, you know, wanted to, you know. And so in that, I kind of lost myself. And mm. then also, so like this year, I denounced AKA in February. And with that, I gained my identity back as well when I denounced that as well. So aside from like coming out that relationship, coming out of AKA, um, moving here away from like family and stuff, I'm basically by myself. So I had no choice but for it to be me and God. So I would say, honestly, it came from years of even down from family members and people at school being like, oh, you're a blackie burnt cricket stuff like that where it's like oh so when my mom allowed me to start wearing makeup nine times out of ten you would not catch me without makeup and then like just because you know most black people do have discoloration on their toenails <laughs> i'm one of those especially that pinky toe <laughs> but oh, pinky toe. i know but literally um, so I've funny. been comfortable now where I'm like, if I don't have toenail polish on, I don't. If I don't have makeup on, I don't. Because I had to start believing what God had already said about me, that he really formed my inward parts. Yes. And beautiful they are. So therefore, I am beautiful yes. with or without makeup. I'm still me. It's okay. Amen. You know, I didn't, I wasn't even expecting to go there. I love to be led by the Holy Spirit, just really organically, just in interviews and conversation. You never know what's going to come up. And so it's funny that we started out kind of kiki and a ha ha on in the back, you know, like, girl, look at me. I got grays. Girl, look at me. I ain't got no eyeliner, no lashes, baby, no lip gloss, no nothing. I do got some anointing oil because I anoint myself daily um, mm -hmm. as the Lord leads. But nonetheless, you know, um, it's the glory of the Lord. I spoke to the glow that I saw. And mm -hmm. that's that starts inward. That starts mm -hmm. inward. And then it works outward. And mm -hmm. a lot of times what we do is we cover up the sickness. We cover mm -hmm. up the sin. We cover up the illness. We cover those things up. And deliverance is definitely something that uncovers. That yeah. uncovers and exposes what's hidden and brings those things to the surface so that they can be dealt with. And so as we're even speaking to vanity or being vain or not even wanting to be comfortable in our own skin, and you denounce an AKA. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, girl. Because <laughs> from what I know, well, I do know some a few things, but I want to hear about your journey um, with denouncing AKA. Um, there's a lot of people that have been denouncing in this season. Um, and so shout out to those that have, but they seem like a very vain de uh, organization, like as far as that, they got the whole, you know, mirror and all of the things. So what a great segue into that as to why you joined and why you denounced and your journey as you feel led. Yeah. So <clears throat> I honestly growing up, so like I said, I'm from Lawton, Oklahoma, which is a military town. It's near Fort Seal, which is the largest artillery base. And okay. so we have all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Like there's not just one said group, you know? So I came from a very diverse background. So honestly, Greek life was not something that I saw a whole, whole lot until about high school. Mm -hmm. um, I had joined a quote unquote, like high school sorority type. It's like we lost you for a second. The devil is a liar. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> okay. I was saying I had joined this high school sorority. The sponsors were like AKAs and Deltas. And I was drawn to um, an AKA because she taught us like to be indecent and in order. And I was like, oh, she's speaking my language because that's how I am. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the classy stuff, but I also like a little bit ratchet, but not too much. But keep it, keep it classy. right. Keep, keep it cute. cute. Yeah. So I was like, okay, decent and in order. I like this. And so 
Um, she was basically mentoring us within our schoolwork and like we were, you know, strolling and stepping and stuff. But wow. I was like, oh, you know what? I might want to do that when I go to college because I always knew I wanted to go to an HBCU since I was little, you know, watching a different world and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I always knew I wanted to go. And so um, I was like, I'm going to do that because there wasn't really a whole lot of Greek life in my family on my mom's or dad side so i could count on one hand who all was in greek life okay and so this is why it's important to really talk with your family like i do talk with my family but i took for granted when my great grandmother was alive because she she was an ordained bishop and um, i didn't know before she became a bishop she had renounced and denounced eastern star so before she passed i kept because I always knew I wanted to do it, but I never thought to ask her about it. I never mm. thought to ask her about joining this. I, and I remember I would ask my mom, like, oh, what do you think great grandma would think? Now, mind you, my mom and my aunt, there wasn't a whole lot they could have said to me about it because they don't know. Because these are secret societies at the end of the day. So they didn't know what it you had to do to become this member. So they wouldn't have been able to say like, hey, you shouldn't do it. You know, your great grandma, she before becoming a bishop, she renounced and denounced Eastern Star, that type of thing. So like on my journey to become it, I just was like all like all gas. Like I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this. I was determined. So when I get to college, there was like this this guy that I was like kind of seeing. He was older than me. That That's not even in my nature to do stuff mm. like being an older man. <laughs> but I was like, I just got to college. I want to try this thing because like my little first boyfriend in high school didn't work out. So I was like, let me, let me just try this dating thing. And so I kid you not, that man, despite a few things, he was walking with the Holy Spirit. And he looked at me one day and he was like, yeah, you're going to go to hell if you pledge AK. And I was like, oh, how dare you say that to me? Like, do you know who my great grandmother is? Do you do you know my relationship with God? Do you know what God has said to me? Oh, this is so, cool. And so he was like, ask God. So I did. And that night, I, I think that was one of the first times I've had like a very vivid dream. Well, to my remembrance that did come from the Holy Spirit. I was walking up like a flight of stairs and the guy I was seeing was in the other room reading and he just looked at me and went back to his book. I went to the bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror and I had black stuff crumbling and falling off of me. And then I ran to the other room and I was like, oh, my gosh, look. And he was like, I told you. And I woke up and I was like, oh, God, surely that was not about AKA. And, you know, I still went on to pledge and um, doing so. Wow. Even coming into it, like COVID happened. So our the line I was on, it kept getting like starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. And knowing what I know now, that was nothing but God telling me to turn it loose, turning it loose. <laughs> and I wanted it so bad. Like my spiritual accountability partner, I asked her to pray with me over it. And she would, but I already knew because she would already put it in my face like, Kiana, I don't think you're supposed to be doing. And I'm like, but I want it. Like wow. when I was pray about it, it was like, Lord, please let me have the money. Please let me make it. And the reason why I wanted it so bad was not just because like people be like, oh, the colors or you get to wear that stuff and they look so pretty. I just wanted to bring quote unquote like tradition to my family because without having the verbiage back then, I did recognize the spirit of poverty. So I thought, well, perhaps if I bring this in, this will bring status and this will help me network and this will help me be better. This will help me, you know, I I do enjoy community service. So I get to be pretty in doing community service. I get to this, I get to that. And I'm like, okay. So I kid you not, we still were able to get the line through, but I was a part of one of those that I had to draw and um, write up an appeal letter. Okay. Because they weren't trying to let us at all. So I wrote the appeal letter and I think like two other people did. It went to the where it needed to go. We were able to finish. Um I think one of the last 
I don't remember. It's been some time. Uh, it was one of the rituals. And I literally, it's like right before we write our name. And um, mm. like, well, look, the way the table had looked, I was like, I just remember freezing like, ah, this is a little weird. But because I wanted it so bad, I was like, don't think about it too much. And I just wow. did what I did. But as I be now, what what did the table look like? <laughs> so the table, it 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 was like it had a white tablecloth. It had a, a candle that's lit. It had the ivies around. A picture of Ethel. I want to say the Holy Bible was there. Um, and then the book where we write our name. Mm. Yeah. But your discernment told you that. This something's not right with this. The mm. picture, the picture of Ethel <laughs> in the box, like what? A can what are we doing? I think I think that's what was on there. And that mind you, like I said, like it's been some time, so I don't remember everything, but I do remember the Holy Spirit reminding no, what got me for real was the uh pillows at the bottom of the table where we had to kneel. Mm. The holy that's the part that the Holy Spirit reminded me. He reminded me of the, the candle being lit, me kneeling, and me writing my name an altar yeah yeah so for those that don't know tell them who ethel is <laughs> ethel is the founder of that organization so um after you know doing that i was like well i wanted it that bad so i'm just gonna do it so after we finish our process and we're out I remember seeing like my former line sisters so happy, so excited. Their family, you know, they come from families with, you know, a little money. So, and there, some of them were legacies. So they had a lot of gifts. Mm. And for me, I'm, you know, we don't have that. My mom wasn't even able to come. So, um, cause mind you, I went to school in uh, South Carolina. So okay. my mom was in Oklahoma. So, okay. um, and even though my biological dad was, um, they are not too far in South Carolina. They didn't do anything for me. So I was like, well, okay. But I had a, a friend in college where she recognized that and she still got me a gift. And I, I remember boohoo crying because I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't think nobody thought of me. It was like mm -hmm. so crazy. And so I just remember feeling bled. I'm like, I did all this hard work, but I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it. I remember being sensitive, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not fully enjoying this. Right, right. I remember, so I've always considered myself coordinated. I believe I still am coordinated. But mm -hmm. when it came to learning the strolls and stuff, baby, my rhythm went out the window a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a challenge. I was like, what is wrong with me? Mm. Like, it's not of me. And it was crazy because within that organization, um, I became vice president and chaplain. And chaplain, mm -hmm. you're the one that is reading the word. You are the one that is giving a word. You are the one that they they call it an encouragement, like a word of encouragement. But me personally, I would just read what was in my devotional. And then like I would pray or I would give them scripture. Um, and it was like very ironic <laughs> that I would do that or being on prayer calls with them because it's like... Wow. So it was crazy to fast forward like my senior year of college to bring out uh, the form, my former Neos, their line. And I will never forget there was a part in a different ritual where we're supposed to be reading Esther and Ruth from the Bible. But they had flipped some things to put like an alpha woman or, you know, and I remember pausing and I remember thinking, this is why people get out. And I was like, oh, let me not let me not think too, too much. Like maybe I'm going in too, you know, too much. And because um, by that time I had already seen somebody's denouncing video, but I was somebody where I was like, oh, well, perhaps they just really put the organization before God, not knowing it doesn't matter if, because I think a lot of people think you're physically bowing down and like how you would, when you're at church with God, like if you get on your knees and pray, they thinking you're constantly bowing down to this false deity. But it's not just that. Like you have to think about 
when you are wearing those letters. You have to think about what's coming out your mouth. Mm, that's it. Yeah, and, and how, like, compared to, like, God, how far they go to bat for these organizations. Like, <laughs> the scrutiny I faced for denouncing is beyond me, but I fear God more than I fear man. That would be the right thing to do. <laughs> that would be the right thing. Some of, what is some of the scrutiny and things? Because I've heard some really horrible things. I've heard like here lately with the mass exodus of people leaving um, these D9s and, and the exposure, because this is the season of exposure, just in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, pastors are being exposed, their secret sin and these secret organizations and mm -hmm. all of the things, um, because we are in the end times and the time is coming where um, the enemy has uh, been hidden for so long. These things have been going on for so long, but mm -hmm. we're preparing for God to come back. Okay. He's coming back and he's coming back very soon. And yeah. so time is running out. If you haven't even noticed time speeding up, right? The days are like this. Yeah. Hey, it's just like a wake up. It's time to go to bed. Wake up. It's time to go to bed. And so God is, I see time even moving at a rapid pace and it is, it is not coincidence. I don't believe in happenstance and I don't believe in coincidence that there's this mass exodus of revelation and mm -hmm. also people that are denouncing, right? Mm -hmm. That are like, like, because the, the what's behind the veil is now being revealed. Mm -hmm. And so people are now waking up from these deceptive slumbers and mm -hmm. from some of the things that they might have turned a blind eye to and the Holy Spirit is shedding light. And what I've seen is um, I heard that that they were trying to bring um, accusation, but that's Satan, right? The mm -hmm. the organizations were trying to get lawyers to yeah. basically shut down people that are telling their testimony, that are telling their truth, and mm -hmm. exposing the hidden and dark cultish, because that's what it is. It's a cult mm -hmm. um, behaviors and things that are happening because a lot of bad things or have happened and are still happening to people as a product um, of their partnership and in coming into these organizations. And so you have to fear the Lord. Tell us some things that you experienced because I've heard some. <laughs> well, um, now. well, when I denounced, uh, so what made me just say, okay, enough is enough because they're, I think for a good year, like I went to South Carolina for a homecoming um, mm -hmm. in November. <laughs> I'm only laughing because God really opened my spiritual eyes in that moment. Mm. When God want me to leave something alone, he'll let me see what it looks like in the spirit. And I'm like, oh, that's enough. <laughs> I was going to leave it alone. <laughs> like I didn't want to see. So I kid you not, we had got up to stroll in like the plaza and like the watch I had on it flew. And I was like, I wasn't going that hard for the fly. And when it flew the way it flew, I when I looked, it was like the alphas and the Qs and the depth. When I tell you, God, let me see what that looked like in the spirit. I said, so you know what's funny? What? In the moment, in the moment, I was like, well, let me just enjoy it because I ain't gonna be doing this again. <laughs> let me just let me just finish it this out. My last straw. This, that that was it, and that really was it. That was my last one. And so, um, wow, I should have like honestly looking back, I could have just left, but I just I don't know. I just went ahead and just because I then I started looking for my watch, and somebody handed it to me, and how fast it went. It was like I was in slow motion, but it happened so fast. And the the person that handed me my watch, I just remember feeling like that was not on accident. Like that was like the Holy Spirit for real. And so fast forward um, at the top of this year before I um, left um, a church I was at consistently since I had moved here. Um, mm -hmm. I went to a Bible study and there was like I saw like some keys. And it had like the AKA stuff on it. And I was one of them. <laughs> I, had, I had my little keychain, my little lanyard. And I wouldn't wear nail you to church, but like some of them would. And so I saw it. I was like, oh, hey, Sarah. And the Holy Spirit cut me up. He said, you don't say that in my house. I was like, oh, well. And so it at that point, though, I had started. Wow. Let's see. When I moved here, I stopped paying dues. 
Mm. I would wear nail yes sometimes, but not often because I was like, God, what is going on? Like at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of like people renouncing and denouncing, but it kept smacking me in my face. And that's one thing about conviction. And when God said enough is enough, you ain't going to know no peace. No peace. So I was like, well, God, I want to hear what you have to say about this. Amen. Then, then once I realized the truth, I started to like bargain. <laughs> I was like, well, God, perhaps, you know, I could change it. Perhaps I can write a proposal and they could change how they do things. Mm -mm, no. So finally, when I got out, right. <laughs> She's going to bargain. <laughs> You're going to bargain with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could, you know, not be so devilish. <laughs> No, no man, that's not how it works. That ain't how it so works. Is. I finally, I was like, okay, God, I know I have to come out of this thing. I was talking with somebody that I had used to go to church with, and we were like, well, let's just finally talk about, you know, the process, like the rituals and stuff. And then it, like, God to both of us brought back a flashback of stuff we, and it's like, okay, yeah, we got to leave this alone. There is no changing this. And um, once I did that, the Holy Spirit instructed me. It was like a download. He instructed me, wow. oh, boom, 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 what to do. I took, I went to Walmart, got two large boxes, packed up all the mail out of my house. And then a church I was at very briefly, um, they do deliveries and stuff like that. So I was able to just burn everything. Mm -hmm. um, and he instructed me, I told my former line sisters in the chat I was in with them. I just said, hey, um, this was a very long and hard decision to make, but I had to ask God, how did he truly feel about me being in this organization? And he revealed it. And I, I'm i to come out of this organization. Um, I believed every one of y'all to be good friends and I guess good sisters. So if y'all will still have me, I'll still have you. Um, that's just the gist of what I said. And like, once I left the chat, there were two people that I would never expect to have text me personally and say they support my walk with Christ. The friends I thought I had coming in the organization said nothing to me and haven't. And one of them, I only wow. spoke with her like briefly because it was her birthday and I was kind to tell her happy birthday. Um, but the rest didn't say nothing to me. And so that did break me a little bit. And I remember like praying and crying about it. And the Lord blessed me with people that had renounced and denounced. And I was able to be on prayer lines with them. And I was like, wow, like God, you really brought me community because I was weak <laughs> in that yes, moment. Yes, just like God. Then, so then we come to the scrutiny and the dream, the Lord started to show me piece by piece with people that I was boohoo crying about, like, dang, God, like, he showed me how they really felt about me. Oh. And so then that was hard to perceive. Like, one of them, the one I was closest to, she was like, you need help. You need to get some help. I know somebody that could get you some help, like, in my dream. And I was like, what? And so I was like, God, like, yeah. I'm just praying mm. for them, right? Just praying for them. Like, yeah. I'm somebody where yeah. my silence is golden. I, wow. will let, I will let God speak for me. I'm not going to, I'm mm. not somebody where I got to clear a whole lot up. I prefer to live under a rock, honestly. <laughs> and so <laughs> I really do. And so, so, hopefully, under the silent rock, Jesus. <laughs> it's so, under the rock. We don't want you there. <laughs> Come out of so, under the rock. He, yeah, I was like, okay, God, like that, that hurt. And then he started wow. showing me how other people felt about me. And I kid you not, it happened in real life. Like mm. I, was, I was on TikTok and you know how Tiffany Montgomery has been talking about the mass exodus. And I had liked it because I'm. Oh, hold on a second. We just was closest to it. Okay. I'm back. Now you're back. Okay. <laughs> oh, the devil don't like this this testimony, but that's okay. We go, we go <laughs> remix it back up. So you were saying Tiffany Montgomery, and then it kind of froze. So I was on TikTok. Tiffany Montgomery was talking about like the mass exodus, and like one of the girls that I was closest to that God showed me in the dream that said I needed to get help. That's the first comment I saw. She commented, "All y'all need help," and put laughing emojis. I was like, oh, and so then the day I denounced an old professor, an old mentor I had, he 
um, as I've been navigating, you know, this adulting world and corporate and stuff like that, like he was somebody I could go to for advice on like, you know, corporate jargon or like, how do you negotiate this? And, um, wow. the day I denounced, he called me and I was like, are you calling me because you saw my post? Well, I only put it right. on my story. I didn't make a video because I didn't have the okay from the Holy Spirit to do that one. So I just. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, uh, I renounced and denounced AKA. And he was like, why? And I was like, because to become a member, we did occultic practices that are demonic. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mind you, he's a new and his sons are newts. So I kid you not, I'm thinking like everything is still cool between him and I. Wow. I'm going about my business. Mind you, I've just been in a season where I haven't really been on social media like that. And so I get on Facebook because I had a friend ask me like, oh, I sent you something. Like, did you see it? And I'm like, oh, let, let me look. First thing I see, he like reshares something. And it's like, oh, if Jesus letters are alpha and omega, then my letters are good enough for me. And like he had tagged some people and they're in the comments, I keep key key in. I was like, oh, so that's how you truly feel about me. Like God, so mind you with him, wow. God had already told me, like I wasn't even asleep. It was a vision. He just let me know like where I'm taking you, he won't go. And that hurt me because I was like, oh, he's helped me so much. And then boom, I see that. And then there was just other people where it was like, dang, in school, like we was cool. And I see them making comments like, oh, y'all denouncers, y'all, um, what it, what even is that? How about y'all address y'all's other sins? And it's like, well, if you speak with us, we'll tell you we have. And then it's like, I had people talking about some, like they made this post and were like, mm, well, I renounce it, denounce paying rent. And stuff like that. So some of the stuff was like indirect towards me. Uh, 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 God will stuff. not be mocked. He won't. He won't. And I was like, I just felt God being like, you know, you cry for these people, but they don't, they don't care nothing about you. He wanted you to know that. Yeah. He wanted to show you. And it manifested in the natural realm, right? Yeah. And, and when we say things like mani manifested or these things, those words don't belong to Satan. Let me be clear for those that are listening that Satan is a copycat. Satan is a counterfeit. So anything that's happening or you hear about vibrations or frequencies or, mm -hmm. or, or manifestation um, or any of these things, they originated in God. They were created by God and the enemy cannot create anything. He has no ability to create anything. He is a copycat and a counterfeit. So if you hear me speak to the, the manifested, uh, tangible evidence mm -hmm. of what God showed you in the spirit, that's what I'm speaking to. I'm not using new age terms. So let me just bring clarity to that because people be like, eh, that's a new age term, you know, these sorts of things, but nothing but Satan don't own nothing. He ain't got nothing. He don't own nothing. Even the power that he has is given to him by God. And even that power is limited and it's for a set time. There's an expiration on the time and the power and his use of it in the earth for yeah. a set time. So mm -hmm. understand that even when we see people moving in demonic power and all of those things, they are not more powerful than us. Mm -hmm. They are not more powerful than the kingdom of God. And so nonetheless, um, the Lord will show you because the, the spirit realm is the superior realm. It is the causal realm. So cause and effect. There's always a cause. There's always a source. There's always even resources. There's a it means re means to do again. Yeah. And so when God gives resources, whether it's your job, whether it's some something else to provide is a preface to the vision. The vision is given by God mm -hmm. and he gives provision and he gives resources because he is the source. Right. And so, you know, being clear, it's unfortunate that people um, believe that um, they compare themselves, like you said, well, if God's Alpha and Omega, then it's okay for me, right? And and the unfortunate thing is, in Christ, you have so much more because yeah. Christ has actually made you a co 
heir, a co-inheritor, right? A co, a joint heir. He's actually giving you um, equal authority, authority and access to the kingdom of God. And so it's far above the, the D9 organizations, um, acceptance, validity, or anything that they could possibly give you. People sometimes stay connected because of sisterhood, because of, mm -hmm. you know, friendship, but it's fake. Like yeah. every time, every time I hear about people denouncing, they always talk about how, and that's Satan, right? Yeah. They, have, they have a mask on, right? Mm -hmm. And they're pretend it's deception. Yeah. I'm your friend and it's conditional. And God's love for us is not conditional. His friendship with us is not conditional. And it's not based upon, oh, you are my sister because you're connected to this organization. Mm -hmm. And then when you're not, because if it was true sisterhood, right. if it was really rooted in God, then it would not, manifest itself in the way that it does mm -hmm. right in the way so when you denounce these people would not have turned their backs on you but god showed you the heart because that's what he sees he yeah. doesn't see your letters he doesn't see you know all this he sees your heart so mm -hmm. he showed you their heart yeah and then he let you see it mm -hmm. with your own eyes my God. So tell me a little bit more about that, about how, how did you counteract the scrutiny? Like, what did you do? Cause you know, there might be somebody watching or watching this. It was like, that happened to me, this happened. And you know, you did mention God brought some kingdom partners and yeah. friendship. So that sounds like one thing, but share a little bit about what he did for you. So aside from uh the people that he brought um and that came about because i actually was on instagram a little bit and okay. um i apparently we had met before and we didn't know it like we were both in aka and that's how we met okay. but we already had each other's phone numbers and we didn't know it okay. <laughs> and so um she had put out a video she was like you know i actually denounced like two years ago i'm just now got the okay to talk about it online so I'm going to make my video. I'm going to talk about it. And I had liked it. And I was like, I, at the time, I was like, oh, there's no peace. I have to get out of this. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, oh. Uh. And I have a cousin. She's still in hers, but she knows she can come out. <laughs> and she know it. But she's she, coming. She's coming. She's coming. But her fear, because I remember when I did it, she was like, oh, you know, key, like, you know, people are going to talk about you. And I'm like, I don't care. I fear God more than I fear men. I'm like, I really wish y'all could see it in the spirit. Like, how I saw it. Ooh, then you would <laughs> Like, then y'all would leave it alone. But what helped, so I was able to connect with the young lady. And we were able, she connected me with people that she met that had denounced and so i was able to pray with them they were able to share with me their testimony but what i was able to do by myself because like they don't live here so i'm still i was still in dallas like by myself and so wow. um i just kept praying philippians 4 over me yes god i just truly believe in you know what i am content in every situation mm, that's a good one i can do all things through christ that strengthen me yes. um, i also truly believe that i lack nothing Woo, come on and that he knows my need not needs but he knows my need and so yeah. as i continue to pray that what i began to have revelation was when you truly digest that um you will have joy in every season and every situation because joy is just that. It can't be taken. Ooh. So as I was going through it, um, God, I just really felt him like supporting me and backing me because in reality, like <laughs> I didn't want to choose scrutiny. I didn't want to choose on. people talking about me because like, even though I jokingly say I prefer to live under a rock, I'm just like, um, I behave extrovertedly, but I recharge introvertedly. Mm, so okay. I really prefer, like, if I do not have to socialize, I guess I just won't. Mm. <laughs> and so um, I'm like, as I get older, I'm like, social media is like, people, they just be talking about what a whole, a whole lot of nothing. A so, whole lot of. I'm like, uh, I'm good. And so I began to leave that alone, not because they punked me and scared me off, but it was like, 
I just simply do not want to engage in this nonsense that y'all have going. And I would still see stuff, but I would never comment on it because for one, God didn't okay me to, and then two, what am I going to, because you're choosing to be ignorant. So I think anything else I would tell somebody is just start believing what God has already said about you and what he said is so, and that the very fact if he's asked you to do this thing, mm. he's going to have you, he's going to support you and he will replace Something else that was very beautiful, aside from Philippians four, is the Jeremiah twenty nine, mm -hmm. but not not not, not just twenty nine eleven. No, right, part, that everybody know. The part that got me mm. was when he was like, "I will bring you back to where I allowed you to be held captive." Mm. And for me, Jeez. I felt revival in my spirit because it's, it's like he has brought me back. I do feel like myself again. I didn't even realize I wasn't myself. Wow. So it's like, I do feel like myself again. I am me. And I keep having people ask me. Unapologetically. Like, yeah. And I keep having people asking me, like, despite the season I've been in, they're like, oh my, so how are you? Like, oh, you really are good? You, you're okay? Like, despite everything, like, wow, how do you stay so positive? And I'm like, this is nothing but the joy of the Lord. Oh, come on. <laughs> like, that is truly all it is. Oh, come on, joy. It's real. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you just have to get to a place where you digest and you get real about what God has already spoken. And then in that, you will have relief. My God. Let me tell you two things you spoke to, which are, you know, the fruit of the spirit. But, but joy and peace mm -hmm. you can't pay for mm -mm. you can't get it anywhere but in the kingdom mm -hmm. and what looked like joy mm -hmm. prior to what looked like peace mm -hmm. you come to find out the true meaning of the peace that surpasses all understanding Mm -hmm. When you can't muster a tear, when you when you feel like I should be crying, I should be hurt, I should be grieving, <laughs> and it's not that grieving is a bad thing or sorrow or or experiencing emotion. I don't want people to think that joy and peace that like we just waking up every day like <sighs> you know in the spirit, but because we live in a human flesh, right, in human form, but there's a joy that comes from the spirit of the living God mm -hmm. because because it's a re reviving resurrecting power mm -hmm. that is infused in the indwelling being of the Holy Spirit that's in you and yes. so when the Holy Spirit is activated not you know mm -hmm. in your life it's alive you can't do anything but feel it and and the stronger you are in the spirit yes. the let your flesh has to bow your flesh has to submit so even when you in your head are thinking I'm sad or I'm, I'm something, the emotion is something that resides in your soul. So your soul is comprised of your mind, your will, and your emotions, but your spirit, when your spirit man grows, it takes precedence, priority, and you can then regulate your emotions, regulate your feelings, and things that you should or think you should feel, you don't. And then you feel like, is this wrong? Is this right? Like, what is this? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the same reviving power that raised Jesus from a dead state. Yeah. <laughs> like dead that raised his, it was his spirit that resurrected him. Yeah. So it's the same resurrection that happens in your body, in your life, in your mind. And so it's like, how can this be? You're so you spoke to joy, you spoke to peace. And it's like, people cannot fathom that, that, that have not understood it because their peace and their joy or their comfort is connected to something. And when you remove that something or it's not right, then they have lost, right? But with God, we, we don't lose, right? With God, we have everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's this joy that God desires to encounter and to experience with every like this is what he wants the believer those that are his mm -hmm. those that are truly children of god right mm -hmm. not just you just here and you just faking and shaking those yes. that are truly his okay yes. 
that are covered by him, that are loved by him, that have relationship with him, those that he knows. Because we're going to have a lot of people that are have a form of godliness that have operated in measures of under of what they know about God, but God don't know them. So it's almost kind of like being a Facebook friends with Jesus. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like being Facebook friends with Jesus because it's like, you know him, but he don't know you. How many of us have connected with people on social media or somewhere because they was connected to somebody else? So you knew somebody else that knew him. Right, you knew so even the word of God says we want to we want to the that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. that's the so they were able to see the revelation of who they were outwardly, who yeah. they not just who they said they were. So you had a lot of people that, like you said, at that altar, that was an altar, that was a place of worship. Okay, and so you worship any other God before him, that's idolatry. Yep. Okay. And that's occultic and that's, that's not God. Mm -hmm. So nonetheless, you get, you get people that like they just cause you put a Bible on the, on the table, don't make it God mm -hmm. just because, you know, you, you know, you know, it's either all God or it's not, it's either God or it's Satan, mm -hmm. right? right? There's no in between. There's no other deity. There's no other, you either serve God or you serve Satan. You either submit to God or you submit to Satan. Right. There's no, there's no fence. There's no, there's no straddling. There's no mixture. There's no lukewarm. God said, right. I'd rather you be hot or cold. Like, uh, you know, let's not, let's not do the lukewarm. Let's not do the double mindedness. Let's not do. So you must decide, you must choose. You either serve one master or you love one. You hate the other. You hate one. Mm -hmm. You love the other. You have to decide this day who you will choose mm -hmm. and if you have not chosen jesus then that automatically puts you on this side so so many people are going to say just because they proclaim the name of jesus just because they use jesus in a scripture or they they know scripture or they go to church right god's gonna say depart from me you worker of iniquity for mm -hmm. i never knew you right because you were facebook friends with jesus you mm -hmm. were not friends with him yeah. You know, he, you didn't have relate because when I'm truly your friend and you're my friend, then there's certain things that come with a friendship. There's mm -hmm. a certain intimacy. There's a certain knowing that I'm going to have with you, Kiana, if you're really my friend. Can yeah. nobody tell me nothing about you, Kiana, if you're my friend? Mm -hmm. Right? So can nobody tell you nothing about Jesus? Because mm -hmm. Jesus is really <laughs> your friend. Right? Yeah. So can nobody come and sway you? And with the fool out loud, they can't pull up on you and be like, Jesus ain't who he say he is. Because you're going to be like, and is. Mm -hmm. And is. And who said it? And I'm going to dot you in your eye if you say it again. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so just like God fights for us, you know, as true children of God, many will be deceived yeah. and many will think that they're going to enter in, but yeah. he's going to say, depart from me. Mm -hmm. I don't know you. I don't know you. And that's the saddest thing ever. It's no, no organization can be worth eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. No, no, no acceptance from man. Mm -mm. Right? There's there's nothing there's nothing in this world that's that's even tangible when mm -hmm. you look at the eternal and the eternal you know um, reward yeah. of living with God and yeah. and serving God and being with God because mm -hmm. I don't want to spend eternity in hell because of my line sister mm -hmm. because of my this organization mm -hmm. that's gonna wither away and die. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, by fire, in yep. the name of Jesus, it will be consumed mm -hmm. and they will be thrown in the lake of fire. How sad. But what we can do is for those that the Lord leads us to is to partner in prayer that the veil is removed and the scales fall from their eyes and that they're able to repent and mm -hmm. receive God's forgiveness and be saved from eternal damnation in hell. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just because you've overcome, I hope you don't mind just saying a quick prayer. And we we got a few things I want to talk about before you leave, but saying a quick prayer because you are more than a conqueror, right? Because mm -hmm. you were once in this organization and now you've denounced and renounced and received your deliverance. And so I just want your authority 
because when you endure a thing and mm-hmm. God, and you persevere and you overcome, there's a level of authority that you have. I've never been in a D9 organization. Mm-hmm. So I do carry authority of Christ, yeah. but there's a, there's a certain niche area that you have when there was a stronghold, when you were connected to something and God delivered you from it and he sent you to deliver others and bring others back. So just your voice, just, just you making a declaration, someone can grab and take hold to an agreement and receive their deliverance and freedom. So before we close out, I'd like you to say a short prayer for those that are still in the organization that may be thinking about getting out or maybe not even thinking about getting out right now. Um, But whatever the Holy Spirit leads you um, to pray so that we can yoke our faith with the kingdom of heaven and see more denounce and more renounce and leave this awful thing in Jesus name. And so now you denounce this organization. How was your process? I heard that sometimes it was hard for people. Like they drew out the process and gave them a hard time. Did you get a hard time? Did they make it hard for you? Yeah. Well, so um, we'll see. It's June 13th. I I, don't, I forgot what that letter said, child. I had got a letter from them. Like, let's see. I denounced February, mailed it off, everything, notarized it. And that's another thing. I had to get it notarized. For them to even accept it i remember emailing them after a month of like hey did you guys receive my letter no response so then about two weeks ago i got a letter in the mail from them and i I had to be i had to sign it to like make sure that they knew i received it and they were like oh um we received it we'll vote on it your we'll vote on your expulsion um at boule which is their biannual conference and the amount of people that have done it, I'm pretty sure I'm well, I'm I'm free. I'm delivered. In Jesus' um, name, you are. And so they were asking for my certificate and my pen back. Mind you, that pen, let me tell you something about that pen. That pen, that's the same pen that you, you only wear that when you die and they do the uh the the ritual where they I guess sing. It's um they yeah, so I guess that's why they want it back, but it's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that to be sent back so i ain't said nothing to them i'm like the same way y'all play with me i just it's not, burnt it's gone yeah i ain't said nothing because i'm like i'm pretty sure like the amount of people that have renounced and denounced like y'all i wouldn't have even i wouldn't have even trusted giving them the pen back i didn't either because well, who knows what they're doing with that stuff yeah i don't know so it don't matter you disconnected mm um, aside from that, though, um, yeah, in the letter, like me telling my testimony and stuff like that, like they are saying like, oh, you can't represent yourself as AKA anymore and um, you're to not speak of AKA, that sort of thing. But I'm like, well, I was already telling my testimony before I got this letter. I'm going to still tell my testimony because at the end of the day, this is a God thing. This is above me. So, yes, I've been growing and going deeper with God, um, Jesus, but it's, it's bigger than me. It's above me. Yeah. So who are who are you to speak and say, I can't tell my testimony? So if you truly are a Christian organization, then you should, I don't know, be more sisterly and be more kind and perhaps, you know, understand, like, you know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's crazy. People still probably will want to join. So. Oh yeah, yeah, and 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 understandably. I mean, you know, rebellion is rebellion, right? Mm-hmm. It's people here, and they just kind of, you know, people have their own will. God gives us all a free will to choose, yeah. and so um, we pray that they don't, you know. And for you know, as you guys band together in the communities and stuff, and begin to bring awareness and strength to this movement, because it is a movement. It's a movement of God. Mm-hmm. Right. This is this is not this is uh, alignment and agreement with being a child of God and helping people to get free from captivity, because that's what it is. It's bondage. It truly is bondage. And it's so much more because their souls are bound. Yeah. Um, and so through this connection, through these organizations. So, you know, you're, um, God is covered and he's always covering his people. And so even if the weapon formed, it won't prosper in Jesus name, even if they tried there's nothing that they're going to be able to do because the God that we serve is much, much, much more powerful yes. than the God that they serve. Right. So it's just there's no comparison. There's no equal. There's no there's no. So we, there's no fear 
and what can or what they'll do or what they'll try to do because they can't. They literally can't, right? So yeah. the courts of heaven will cease that situation. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Like there's yeah. nothing that they can conjure up that will be able to touch you because you're covered under the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. So how did you get to denouncing and then coming for deliverance? Um. So let's see. So when I went with, through deliverance with you, that was about my... That, that wasn't my first time going through deliverance. Oh, oh good, good, good. But I knew like <laughs> where I was, where I had got the initial deliverance. I was like, I think I need another one. <laughs> and so uh, I, let's see, I was just on YouTube watching uh, Lala Jenkins' YouTube channel and I saw your testimony and I was like, huh. And I prayed on it and I was like, okay, I'm going to fill out the, the um, application packet. And I was like, oh, she mean business. We actually got an application package. She actually gonna get to know me. And so she mean business. Not you. It's like, I don't know. got it on business. Yes. So I was like, my father's you? business. Yeah. That is. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I know at the end of the day, it's impartation. So you're just the vessel. And so um, what's crazy, so the fasting period that you had us go through, um, I had the 14 day. Yeah. And so that wasn't my first time fasting for that long either. But oh, I, what was different about it was uh, I never like when like praying and stuff, I had never successfully done self deliverance before. And so that was different. <laughs> like I, I was, I was looking like, is this me coughing up like this? <laughs> like I was like, Oh, all right. Like I knew that was possible, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been a lot of stuff where I was like, I didn't think at 24 I would see that yet. I would I would think I was gonna be a little older doing this stuff. So come me, on, Jesus. Me doing it now, it, it always baffles me. But yes, that was how I came about. Yeah. Wow. So that's good because a lot of people are like the fast. Oh my God. So, you know, it's actually good that you were able to do that. And so you, I actually, you were actually one of my, cause we have different ministers that, cause we literally have over a hundred applicants right now. Um, and we, yes, we've had to, uh, and this is not uncommon for us. We, we have 60, 70, 80, I mean, you know, and then we have slower seasons, so to speak. Um, and then we have these big influxes of people coming. Um, so we've had to shift some of the way we were doing deliverance to meet the needs of everyone. Um, cause the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And so we're a very mighty team. We're a very strong team with the Lord has called us Gideon's army. And so um, as we're growing and expanding by the day, but nonetheless, Jesus is the deliverer. He can be here, there and everywhere at the same time. And so glory be to God for that, right? That the burden and the weight is not on us. We yoke our, our faith with God and he makes our journey easy and light. And so that's what we do. But in your process, um, something that we've been doing here lately have been mass group deliverances um, so that we can get um, groups of people in right quicker. We can kind of get and so until we can come back to our one to one process and it's going to change. It's evolving a bit um, so that we can still meet the needs of people. But nonetheless, I'm so honored that we were able to serve you. How did the deliverance session go for those that are maybe seeing our, our new process of, of mass? And I do mass deliverance face to face. I do it in churches. I do it in altars. I do group one on one face to face. I do it all right. Um, but in a virtual setting sometimes people are like it how does that work like is it real do you really get deliverance share your testimony and your experience yeah so i was one of those where I was like, mm -hmm. since you're not gonna be laying on the hand <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna come out up and out so but no and believe it or not um as you all were praying uh i did feel like you know, like my stomach turned a little bit. I did feel like my throat kind of clog up a little bit. Um, I didn't remember like crying. And, you know, I remember, <laughs> I think I had asked you because I had got my <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit this year. So okay. speaking in tongues is still new to me. I just, that was like my second or third time. I remember speaking in tongues and I'm singing it though. So I was like, is that normal? 
So like I now the Holy Spirit still showed up. You I mean, I still felt his presence. He still delivered me. And then I remember like midway, I just remember like in my head, it was clear. It was quiet, peace. I remember afterwards when we got off, I was like, I really didn't like talk to anyone. I just, so, I was chilling. <laughs> yeah. Such a peace, such a light, you know, airy kind of thing. Cause it's, it's the manifestation is different for others. Some people hear singing, some people see things, some people feel light, some people feel really heavy and tired. And so I notice a lot of people that have heavy outward manifestations, like the young lady that was manifesting, um, they get tired. They're yeah. usually, they're usually very tired because it's very physical. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, you were actually able to see a manifestation, yeah. um, you know, and so I, I was hoping it wouldn't. Have, I, I had my mute, mics muted um, mm -hmm. because if you were to hear and if I were to have interrogated. Um, but what I didn't want it to do was distract. And mm -hmm. so what's happening in the spirit is still happening in the spirit. The mm -hmm. commands are still going forth, right? Mm -hmm. And and the and and even um one of the intercessors that works on my team, she said that uh as I was praying and as another one of the intercessors was praying, she literally saw the demons in the ground clawing, mm -hmm. right? Clawing, they were that as they were being pulled out, as they were being pulled out. So we do have people, especially and myself, we can see things happening in the spirit. And that was one of the things she saw in the spirit. And so as you guys' deliverance was going on, some things I shared, some things I didn't um, for the sake of time and also understanding because there was a really um, angelic kind of peace from mm -hmm. there. So I don't really like to talk about demons, right? Yeah. When they're gone and yeah. delivered and it's like, oh, and so sometimes there's a fear that'll reopen a door or certain little things yeah. that what happens if they don't, you know, so, you know, when the presence of God is present, that's all that matters because when the presence of God is available, every, nothing can stay. Nothing, right. right? So, and that's more important. That's more important than what once was or what the devil once he had, what he used to have. It don't matter. He ain't got it no more. Yeah. So, right. So we care about this part. We care about healing now. Let's let's walk out your process of healing. And so one of the other intercessors on my team saw a big, huge blanket while mm. we were praying, um, falling and covering you guys. We saw rain in the spirit um, and so many things that was we saw gifts. We mm. saw the Lord handing out gifts to every single one of you um, that were on that call. So in our debriefing, when we were talking about um, what happened in the deliverance, right? And things like that, um, maybe some of those that may need more deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that, if we would contact them and we would like, you know, maybe the young lady manifest cause we like to follow up and things like that. And so we would say, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything you need, you know and help you with your next steps if called yeah. to that? Cause some people are already connected to churches and have covering and pastors and things. So, you know, we don't get in the way of those things. But if we can help, there's a lot of people who aren't connected, who aren't affiliated, and they need to continue their process and journey to heal. So um, however the Lord leads, if that's the case for you, we're just glad that you partnered with us here and you received your freedom. How have things been since your deliverance? Um, Still good. Work in process. Okay. Still good. Still joy. Still peace. Come on. Jesus. Um, I don't, I'm still in that space of people asking like, oh, how are you? I'm good. I'm well. Well. And they're like, because you know, in, in the worldly stance, people are so used to people being like, I'm okay. I'm all right. And that's not really how they are for real. So then when you're telling them I'm well. I'm good. It is well. I'm, yeah. I'm and they're so. like, oh, they're like, are you, are you sure? And it's like, I'm positive. I'm more than sure. I am better than I have been in a while. Wow. Um, despite the season I've been in. So. Wow. Wow. Glory be to God. What's next? What's next for you? What's next? Maybe not share the intricate things that the Holy Spirit said. Don't tell nobody. But what, what do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself heading next? Ah, <sighs> next, next, next. Um, hmm. You know, I'm not a hundred percent. 
Um, I just know that where I am going, it is a new thing. Come on, new thing. Yeah, I know that um, I'm just going to continue to be obedient. Um, I know that as I'm continuing being obedient, um, that can look like anything. Something I've learned is God can show up any and everywhere. So when he Say it asks, again. <laughs> God can show up any and everywhere. So Amen. when he, when he asks you to do something that could be at work, it could be at school, that could be at the family cookout, you don't know. So I just know what's next for me is I have to continue to be obedient and keep his commandments. Amen. So. Cause those that love him follow his commandments. That's how he knows who we are. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Let me make a declaration, few declarations over your life, and then I'm going to have you close us out in prayer to mm -hmm. pray over those that may um, be on the fence, straddling and or struggling in any area of their life. And they're looking or, to God or looking to make a decision. It may mm -hmm. not be um, in, whether you stay in a D9 organization or not. It may just be something life changing, maybe leaving a relationship. Maybe mm -hmm. it's something that God you speaking to you about about and you may be uncomfortable about. So this could apply in so many areas, but um, definitely have you just really quickly say a prayer to those that some things that are in your heart that you might have wanted to hear or know or be reassured about in your process. Um, but right now, I just want to declare over your life that your new beginnings, that God will begin to open up new connections, new divine appointments, that you'll begin to experience his divine presence when you partner with him in prayer in your home, I ask that the Lord will send and loose angelic visitations to your home that even as your dream life opened up, I heard you mention a few things about your dream life um, and things that you hadn't experienced that you will, that God will have and he will release new and fresh impartations in your dream life that will begin to show you more of your identity and your purpose and his plan for your life that's been predestined for you in the name of Jesus. We believe believe by faith and we receive it today that it is so in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I can't let you leave without that. And then we'll let you pray us out. Okay. okay. Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as humbly as we know how, Father. Yes, God. Father God, thank you for the breath in our lungs because that meant today was another day to try. And how grateful are we for another day to try? Father God, just as you lead us and you you follow, not follow, excuse me, Lord, that we, our footsteps are guided by you, God, yes. that you just cover us, God. And when you say go left, we go left. And when you say go right, we go right. Let us be yes. obedient, God. Father God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that is having a difficult season and they know you've spoken and that they are to go away from a situation or a circumstance or a person or a thing that you have already said to go from, but they're having a hard time letting it go, God, I pray that you give them the strength to let it go. Lord, I pray that you give them a heart so they'll continue to be your people. Father God, I pray that there, if there's any idols or hatred or anger, or any scales over their eyes that you remove it, God, yes, God, so that they may have a clear heart. Father God, replenish their heart, replenish their soul so it may be made anew. So that way that they're able to hear and go clearly. Lord, just reveal and just release your spirit of truth yes. over anyone listening. So that way they will be clean and made new and yes. remain in your remnant. In Jesus' yes. mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. May all the hearers of that word, may you be blessed, may you receive it, and may it go forth into the places that it was meant, sent, and intended in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for every word that has been spoken, Father God, for you are a God that cannot lie, and no word will return back to you void. So in agreement with Kiana, in agreement with the will of God, we say yes to you as you have said yes to us. We thank you, God, for being the God of yea and amen. We thank you for hearing the words of the of our testimony for revealing redeeming and renewing our minds this day father we decree and declare that it is so and so it shall be and it is established this day in jesus name 
Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. God bless you. Thank you for coming with and, and giving us your testimony today for Revelations 12, 11 says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in the name of Jesus. So thank you for your word. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for helping to pull others out of the pit in Jesus name. And I pray that you all that watch this are encouraged in Jesus mighty name. God bless you. May God keep you and cover you all the days of your life. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>